Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. In this video, we're going to be discussing some rumors and leaks which have surfaced on the internet surrounding AMD's upcoming RX 6000 series GPUs powered by their all-new RDNA 2 architecture. There has been a lot of anticipation for AMD's upcoming RX 6000 GPUs. I actually haven't seen there be this much hype since the early days of Vega's development. Now this is due to many various reasons, with the main ones being that 1. AMD is going to be finally competing in the high end again after such a long time and are going to be releasing hopefully competitive GPUs to the market right around the time Nvidia had just released their RTX 3000 series which target the mid to high end market and the enthusiast market. Along with the fact that Nvidia's RTX 30 series launch has just been plagued with supply issues where people who are or were interested in buying these GPUs can't seem to find them anywhere in stock which day by day just makes AMD's offerings look even more desirable and worth the wait. I mean what other option do people have? at this point. If you can't find an RTX 3080 anywhere in stock to buy, you might as well just wait until supply normalizes, and by doing so, you'll already have waited for AMD's big Navi to come to the market. Who knows, that might turn out to be for the better. So the leak we'll be going over in this video pertains specifically to some information about big navvies, boost clocks, and frequency figures. This leak originally comes from Patrick Schur on Twitter, who is a known PC hardware leaker, and he had some interesting information to say about AMD's upcoming Navi 21 GPU. He starts off by mentioning that Navi 21 XT will have 16GB of GDDR6 memory, a 255 watt TGP and a game clock of approximately 2.4 gigahertz. Now you might be a bit confused by the XT code, but essentially Navi 21 has three variants. XTX, which is supposed to be the full fat die with the largest amount of compute units. Then there will be the XT die and then a further cut down XL die. Now we're not sure yet as to how these dies will translate to actual SKUs. And remember, we also have Navi 22 and Navi 23. But if we were to assume that this is the 6900 XT or the 6800 XT and that there will be a more expensive 6950 XT on the way, then those would be some pretty promising specs for the second tier card. Now, I won't really be discussing their competitiveness in regards to performance in this video, but just more so focus on the leaks themselves. Patrick did also elaborate further that the sample they were talking about pertained to an AIB model which could be using a beefy cooling setup with better power delivery and thus allowing for these higher clocks. Now, with video cards, they also did comment on this post as well and they mentioned that while they can't verify or validate this claim they did receive some information from their own sources that reference cards have been reaching clock speeds of around 2.3 gigahertz which bodes well for big navi Okay, so the good thing about not being able to get out a video out in the same day means that the following day, you might get to see some updates or a follow-up post. I was actually working on this video the previous day and I just wasn't able to finish it, so I decided to come back to it a day later and, you know, it, when you do stuff like that, sometimes you see these follow-up posts with more information and that's a good thing because then I can update my information as well. So Patrick now has updated their numbers and increased to the TGP, which is now at 290 watts, and it is stated to be the max for Navi 21. Like I said, since this was an AIB card, then it could be an overclocked model, but we'll have to wait and see for that. In extension to these rumors, Rogame, who is also a very well-known hardware leaker, who has been right about many numerous PC specs in the past, also mentions that Navi 21 will be a GPU that will clock exceptionally well. They mentioned that Navi 21's base clocks are around the boost clocks of Navi 10, aka the 5700 XT and 5700. Now, if we go to AMD's own reference specs for the 5700 XT, they list a boost at 19 megahertz and if we take a look at an AIB card such as the well-received Sapphire RX 5700 XT Nitro Plus model they list a boost at around 2010 megahertz so it's actually pretty crazy to see that these guys are actually suggesting that Navi 21 at its base frequency will be running around 1900 or 2000 megahertz however it actually shouldn't come as that much of a surprise if you think about it I have mentioned this many times in past videos as well but I went over the specs for the next gen consoles, those being the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. With the specs listed for those consoles, it didn't seem so far fetched that RDNA 2 GPUs on the desktop would be able to boast impressive clock speed figures. I mean, the PS5 specs list its boost frequency at around 2.23 GHz, which is already significantly ahead of where most GPUs out on the market at that time would clock, and that is on the desktop, I mean. 
Heck, even with Nvidia's RTX 30 series, they never really bumped up the clock speeds much. What made this even more promising for RDNA 2 was the fact that we saw these kinds of clock speeds from a console no less, where they're a lot more power and thermally constrained. With desktop GPUs, you have much higher headroom, so I firmly believe that we'd be seeing the desktop class GPUs for RDNA 2 clock up much higher than last gen. Alright, so just like with Patrick, Rogame had also updated some of their info, and are now claiming that Navi 21's base clocks will be around the same as Navi 10. In fact, the gaps between the base, boost, and game clocks will be a bit larger. He mentioned the following specs. For Navi 21 XL, the base clock is listed at 1350MHz to 1400MHz, game clock at 1800MHz to 1900MHz, and the boost clock at 2100MHz, maybe even 2200MHz. Then proceeds with Navi 21 XT, base clock at 1450MHz to 1500MHz, game clock at 2000 to 2100MHz, and the boost clock at 2200MHz all the way to 2400 megahertz. Now, the reason why you might be seeing a range here is probably because they might be dealing with an AIB model and also the reference specs, so that's why the performance might vary here. So it is interesting to see that base clocks are actually, you know, slightly lower than the RX 5700 XT when you compare them to the reference spec, but really that shouldn't matter a whole lot and gaming performance won't be impacted at all either. When AMD had shifted notes to 7 nanometers and had basically ported Vega 10, just by doing that allowed them to achieve much higher clock speeds. Radeon 7 was able to boost to around 2000 megahertz, maybe even 2100 megahertz if you got lucky, which basically put them on parity with Nvidia's GPUs. RX 5700 XTs would also clock up to around the same boost frequency. I have also seen some users report 2200 megahertz, but those were some extremely lucky and specific controlled conditions. So they're kind of outliers, but like like I said in my 3080 review, clock speeds aren't everything, and performance improvements can come from many various areas. I believe we're going to be seeing ranges and clock speeds because they might be getting mixed information that has to do with reference specs, which are generally the baseline, and then, and then the AIB models will be overclocked specs, which are generally higher. That is when I saw the PS5 and even the Xbox Series X reporting the clock speeds they did. I thought, wow, that must mean that RDNA 2, AMD have increased the clock speeds by quite a lot and it also must mean that they're very power efficient. The Xbox Series X is already in the hands of many in the tech press and big outlets in the video game journalism industry. The general consensus I've seen so far from people who were, who were willing to talk about it, that is, was that the Xbox Series X was impressively efficient, consuming around 180 watts under a gaming load. This is only further indication that RDNA 2 will be a very efficient architecture, and I do think that for the first time in many years, AMD will have the more efficient product stack, in regards to performance per watt, that is, when compared to their Nvidia counterparts. We'll still have to wait for a full detailed architecture reveal for RDNA 2 to know what kind of changes were made to make it so efficient, but let's also not forget that TSMC's 7 nanometer node is also much better than Samsung's 8 nanometer node, which is what Nvidia have used to build their RTX 3000 series GPUs on. So I'm sure that's also very advantageous for AMD. Now, as for performance, I don't have a whole lot to say in this video. For now, all we can really go off of is what AMD teased during their Ryzen 5000 announcement. But from what we saw, performance did also look quite promising. Also, do keep in mind, AMD never disclosed at the time which SKU they teased performance for. For all we know, this could have been the performance of the second tier model, and there might be a model even faster than the one they showed off. But that sort of speculation aside, the performance numbers they showed off at 4K looked very promising to me. Two of the games that I tested in my review of the RTX 3080 were Borderlands 3 and Gears 5, which are two of the three games AMD had used in their teaser. Here, the upcoming big Navi GPU got 61 and 73 FPS respectively. When compared to my RTX 3080 which got 66 and 81 FPS average at 4K. But keep in mind the model I have is an AIB model that was also factory overclocked. That's pretty damn close in regards to performance. Now I don't know what settings they had used apart from ultra or badass and what sections of the game they had tested. Also remember at 4K the load will be practically 99.9% .9 GPU bound so that could also play a role as well. However, it'll be interesting to see how AMD does at lower resolutions like 1080p and 1440p. If you guys had seen my RTX 3080 review, in a lot of cases at 1440p in games such as Far Cry New Dawn or GTA 5, the 3080 was not noticeably faster uh, than the 2080 Super, and when we had switched to the 4K resolution, all of a sudden you'd see a very large margin. So it, it'll be interesting to see if AMD also runs into that same uh, sort of issue with their architecture, or if scaling will be 
much better. So that that could mean that uh, our DNA 2 might even outperform AMD at lower resolutions, which, you know, for a lot of gamers who are playing at those lower resolutions as opposed to 4K, AMD could have a winner on their hands. Regardless, these numbers do look pretty good, and if that really wasn't the fastest GPU in the stack, then I think AMD could very well be extremely competitive with NVIDIA this generation and the high end, a position they haven't been in since the 290X was released back in 2013. I'm extremely excited for these new AMD RDNA 2 GPUs, and can't wait for the announcement on the 28th. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.